Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. I'm Vanessa Cosmo and I love all things beauty related. I love how to, styling, makeup reviews, and just doing general tutorials. So for today's video is a long awaited one for me. I've been really waiting to dive into the whole Christmas holiday themed videos and today is that day where I dive in and we do a little tutorial. So today's gonna be that classic Christmas holiday look. Nothing crazy hard to do and it's just pretty much simple eyes with a bold lip. So I thought I'd incorporate kind of two videos into one. I purchased a lot of new things in the month of October and also November, and I just really haven't had the time to feature them on my channel. I will get into why in a moment. There's some exciting news that I have to share, but yeah, I'm gonna incorporate mostly new products for this try on, it's like a haul, but also a tutorial in one. And we'll do a classic Christmas look. Let's get into the video. This one is not sponsored. I know I had a bunch of sponsored content. This one is totally not. I bought everything myself. Here. So we're gonna get into primer first. I have a new one and it's super bougie. I bought it with the Sephora 20% off. This is the Guerlain Paris Meteorite Base, which was a super bougie purchase but the reason I bought it was because I was looking for a new primer like oh my goodness it's just so gorgeous first of all this packaging is just stunning on its own I was looking for a hydrating primer to use during the winter that would still kind of help with my oils but be hydrating and I really like the Dominique Cosmetics and JD Weighty 180 primer and I've been savoring it I also don't like to use it on camera because you can't buy it but this kind of smells like cucumbers. It's very refreshing and doesn't break me out. So I was looking for something similar and I thought I would just try a new primer because I do occasionally like to add primers. I do think they make a difference, especially when you're doing something a little bit more glammed up. And I saw this one um, and I've never even heard anyone talk about it, but apparently it's been out for five years or more. And these little like pigment balls have been all the rage for foundation. So I wanted to give it a try. And one review in particular said this smelt like cucumbers and was very smooth and hydrating, which is why I thought it'd be perfect to try and replace this one. Long story short, the other reason I bought this bougie primer was to kind of treat myself. Now, I mean, everything in this video is definitely me treating myself in some way or the other. But this one was because I got a new job. <laughs> which I'm so excited for. Happened really quickly and kind of out of the blue, but this is my celebratory, I got a new job, I want my base to look amazing for when I go in the office, kind of primer. <laughs> so when I pump it out, I've only used this once just to see what it'd be like. It is definitely a little bit liquidy. You can see it falling down my hand there. And it's kind of got like a pearly pink cast. I think these bubbles burst before they come out of the dispenser or the pump. It has a slight like rose water scent, but also kind of cucumber. So it does smell very similar to the Dominique Cosmetics one and it feels very similar as well. And I think this also is just gonna give a little bit of a slight glow, but it feels really nice. Like it doesn't feel too moisturizing that my foundation will slip inside, but it also feels like it's drying down and getting a little bit tacky. So far there is a slight scent, so if you're sensitive to scents, I would say stay away from this, but it does feel moisturizing. The foundation I'm gonna use for today's video is the Le Beige Touche de Tint Water Fresh Complexion from Chanel. This is in the shade B30. Now this has like been all the rage for the past few months. And then it comes with this little dinky brush, which I am not gonna use. So I actually bought this months ago. You can see it's got the little suspended bubbles just like the uh, Guerlain one primer that I just showed you. So this one I picked up when I was in Europe this past summer. I haven't really talked too much about it, but when I was going on that trip, I knew like this foundation everyone was talking about and I wanted to pick it up. I tried to get it at the airport, but they were out of the shade B30, which was my shade. And then we happened to be walking around this town 
called Harlem in the Netherlands and it's like the most stunning little cute town ever. I totally wanna to move there someday. I think that would be amazing. And I highly recommend you check it out. But they had a shop called Perry ECXL. I will <laughs> show you the storefront here, but essentially my understanding is that it's an outlet store for makeup. They kind of look like a Sephora, but on a smaller size. And they had this foundation, which is brand new, at 30% off. Overall, I paid 64 Canadian dollars for this, which I feel like is a steal because I'm pretty sure this retails for about around 100 Canadian dollars, which is insane. Um, so buying it for that price was awesome. So if anyone's in Europe, in Netherlands, look for the Paris ECXL store and you might be able to get your hands on this for a discounted price. So I definitely recommend that. I did wear this about half the time on my trip after I tried it out, but I wanna feature it here because I don't think I've talked about it on my channel yet. We're gonna see how this foundation goes with the primer. I'm gonna pump it on the back of my hand here. So what I'm gonna do is just burst the pigments with my hand. Now this one is definitely moisturizing. It's got, honestly, I'd say light to medium coverage more on the light side. So far, so good. These two seem to be blending very well together. This looks amazing. My skin looks so good. I really enjoy this combination. I can tell you that this foundation is one I've really liked, but I haven't wanted to use it a lot on my channel because it's so expensive and it's a little hard to get, but also because it's so expensive, I'm trying to use it sparingly. So because Christmas is that special time of the year, it only comes once a year, this is when I'd be reaching for my more bougie, expensive foundations. The ones that I know work every time because I really don't wanna deal with something that's fussy. So my recommendation for you is if you're following along with this tutorial, use one of your foundations that you know works every time for you. If you're someone who has multiple foundations. I love when I have a great skin day. It just makes me so excited. I'm just gonna pat everything in using this damp sponge. This one's from Florasis and I like it because of the flat side. This is just gonna pick up any extra foundation I didn't need. You can see it definitely picked up a, a good amount. This is just gonna help everything to look a little bit more natural and not so heavy. Let's do concealer. For concealer, I bought the Milk Future Fluid All Over Cream Concealer. I got the shade 7NW. I really do like this concealer. It's uh, an interesting packaging, kind of reminded me of like Rem Beauty. Um, the applicator is, honestly, I can't make up my mind if I like it or not. The color is a little bit on the yellow side and maybe a little too dark for me, but I have been able to make it work and I really like the finish of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just apply it where I want some extra coverage, where there might be some redness, and where I might need a little extra hydration. It's definitely a little bit more on the medium to full coverage side. And I think you could build it up to get that full coverage look. And I'm just gonna use this sponge. I really did brighten up this side and just kind of smooth it out. I also like that it's not very drying. Typically concealers that are a little bit more full coverage tend to be very drying. So the fact that this gives good coverage and is buildable, but it's not drying is a win for me. I, skin looks awesome. What is going on? I'm clearly very enthusiastic for today's video. Now I'm gonna do the thing where I layer cream products and then put the powders on top. This is a Christmas look, I want things to last. If this is the makeup I'm gonna wear Christmas day, which most likely it will be, it's gonna be a long day. I need things to look good and be able to just touch it up a little bit here and there. So locking things in with powder is just gonna work really well for me. This is from Auric. It's their Glow Lust in the shade of Morganite. If I have used this on my channel, it's been a very long time. So I wanted to use something that's got a little bit of a champagne-y undertone to it because when I think of a classic Christmas look, I think slightly silver gold on the eyes, a bold red lip, and just like little pops of gold. So this one's kind of got that champagne-y color to it. A little bit of a pearlescent. 
This is very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter or the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Highlighter. Instead of having a DOFA applicator, it has a pump. So if there's those of you out there who are nervous about bacteria and putting things back in after they've touched your face, this is for you. But you can pretty much use it in the same way. I also find it has a little less pigment. I'm gonna shear this out just so you can kind of see a little bit of that luminosity. There we go, that's the glow for you. I should also mention I got a new coffee machine, which is probably why I'm like super wired. I normally am a tea gal. I tried an espresso machine. I love it, but I am like buzzing right now. Okay, <laughs> we got that on. I'm going to go into the Hollywood Contour Wand in what shade is this? Fair Medium from Charlotte Tilbury. I also use this very sparingly because... It feels like there's literally nothing in here and I've probably used this three times. I like these products from Charlotte Tilbury, but I just feel like for the money that you're spending on this and how it feels like it's already like empty, even though I've used this like three times, it's hard to justify it. I'm gonna do a little, little snatching in some areas. So I don't like to feature it, but this is a holiday look where I'm trying to use more of my favored items that work really, really well, regardless of the price tag. And this is something, it just works. Scooch a little bit closer so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Taking it pretty much all the way to where my eyebrow starts. I make my nose look a little bit longer and skinnier, like tapered. Then for the other sections, I thought I might use a different brush, but I just can't. I have to use my e.l.f. number, what is this? The small stippling brush. I love this brush so much. I have to use it. Oh yeah, that just blends out like, so good, so subtle. So you can see this isn't a very bold contour, and that's kind of why I like it. It's great for those full glam because it really does last, but it mimics shadows so well and blends out really easily. And I feel like it balances the right amount of pigmentation with blendability. I just kind of like flung out of my hand. Whereas I feel like the Merit bronzers are a little bit too creamy um, that they blend out to a larger surface area and then they're lightly there, give you a glow, but they won't last as long as this will. If you want something more intense, you can definitely go in there and build it up, but I'm gonna stop there because we're going on top with powder. If you're someone who's really dry, just stick to the cream portion of this tutorial. We've had a few new products. We've had a few tried and true loved products. We're gonna go back into some new products. This right here is a duo set that I got from Laura Mercier. It's the Cheek to Cheek Tinted Moisturizer Blush Duo. Now, I believe this is still on their website. I have three of these already. And then when I saw that you got two full sizes for pretty much the price of a full one plus like an extra $10, I definitely had to do it because for two full size products and that amount of savings, I really wanted it and there were shades I didn't have. So you get the shade Coastline and then the other shade I believe is Southbound. Today we'll just play with Coastline because I wanted something neutral that worked no matter your skin tone for this video. But yeah, I think these are really great. The first time I got them, I really wasn't sure about them. They are a squeezy tube, so you're gonna need to apply these to something before you apply them to your face. Definitely do not go and put these on because they are somewhat pigmented and uh, I just wouldn't recommend it. So I've got them there. I'm going to blend that out and just show you the color. For reference, I'll just show you what Southbound looks like. Okay, so yeah, this one's way, way, way more pinky right here. And then this one's got that neutral undertone. And then if we mix them, all right, <laughs> I've mixed them and I'm gonna use that because I like the pink undertone. So I do find these very hydrating. I do think 
they take a little bit of finessing to figure out how to use them but essentially I like to use it off the back of my hand and then go in either with my fingers instead of a brush because I feel like the brush picks up a bit too much. I have also found that these can be a little bit patchy and streaky if you put too much down. So you really need to find the right balance. So I'm gonna go in working off the back of my hand. That is a very, very lovely color. Perfect for this video. We want something that's neither too warm or too cool tone. Very neutral because I really want something that would work for anyone's undertone. So keeping it neutral. And that's also just gonna help with the eye look and have everything come together. I like how that looks. For powder, I'm gonna use the Givenchy Prism Powder. Um, I have the shade 3 Satin Blanc. So this one, I just can't stop using. It's really good. Again, a bougie purchase, the Laura Mercier powder will work really well. Or if you have one that you like, don't feel like you need to use something like this. The reason I like it is because it is very lightweight. They have different shades depending on your skin tone. And I really find it has a good balance of luminosity, but also matte capabilities. What I mean by that is I feel like it doesn't diminish the luminosity I might already have on my face so all the creamy product products we've applied but then it also helps to minimize my oil so keep things looking matte where i need them to it's very versatile and unique and so i just can't stay away from it and then just using a small little brush like this i'm going to dust away any excess powder that i don't need looking fantastic if i do say so myself now for the next part, we're going back into a product that's not new. I'm gonna use one of the Holiday Hourglass palettes. The reason I'm using this one is for this shade right here, which is Mood Exposure, the blush. It is a very neutral, definitely more cool tone leaning blush, but I really like the look of it. And I think it's gonna look really nice with what we're wearing today. And then I'm also gonna use the same bronzer, highlight everything in here to do the rest of the makeup because it's just easy one and done. Now Hourglass comes out with our holiday palettes every year. Haven't yet purchased the ones from this year, which I think are the most inclusive they've ever come out with. Let's start bronzing. I'm just gonna use this Katie Jane Hughes Spectrum Number no. One brush. It's a pretty big, it's the biggest one in the collection and I'm gonna use this to bronze. Now I'm focusing this upwards right here and not bringing it too far down. I wanna keep my face looking a little bit more cinched and petite, mostly because around this time of the year, I'm not gonna lie, I've put on a few pounds. I've eaten my chocolates every single day. I've been, you know, in the festive mood, indulging on treats, baking. So I typically have a few extra pounds on my face. So keeping my face looking a little bit more petite and contoured is something I really, like around this time just to kind of hide those extra pounds I've gathered just to make my face look smaller. Using the Katie Jane Hughes Spectrum number no. five brush, gonna go into mood exposure. Anyways, I do really enjoy these palettes because they do offer a good amount of variety. Again, keeping this higher up, but pretty much ever since I've gotten into makeup, I've bought the hourglass palette that's come out in the tone that best suits me. So mood exposure you can actually buy on its own, but I think that's a pretty nice neutral color. And then for highlighter, I'm just gonna take a little fan brush and go into this shade right here, which is the, the highlighter. Just focus it on the corner here. I also like these powders because they're better, in my opinion, for skin that's a little bit older because they're so finely milled um, there isn't a heaviness to them that you might find in other face powders. So I think that's why they work well and don't collect too much in fine lines and wrinkles and exaggerate those fine lines and wrinkles. So another reason why I buy the palette every year, I'm getting older, my skin's getting more aged, more wrinkles and lines are appearing almost daily. So having something that's a little bit more lightweight is what I'm starting to look for. We're pretty much done with the complexion at this point. Okay, so my eyebrows are done. I just used a combination of the PYT Beauty Brow Goals Pencil in Taupe. 
and then the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Duo in Auburn. This next product I am very excited for. We're back into the new and I got the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes Palette. This is just the basic packaging it comes in. It's a Makeup by Mario standard. It feels super luxe, very high quality. And then when you open it up, these are the shades. But his shimmers in here, when I saw them, I'd say specifically this one right here in the middle and then this one right there. I thought would be perfect for the holidays. This is my first Makeup by Mario palette and so far I'm impressed. It has a good balance of some shimmers and then a good balance of mattes, which is what I usually use to evaluate a palette. I'm gonna prime my eyes and curl my lashes beforehand. For eye primer, we're just gonna use the Urban Decay Primer Potion. We're gonna go into this shade right here. Just using a very fluffy brush. It does seem to be a little powdery upon application. And then I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna mix this shade right here and this shade, but I'm not gonna bring it up so high. I'm gonna focus it right there. Now, depending on the shape you like to make, I like rounded shapes for my eyes just because of the way my face shape is. But if you want something more sharp, then keep that in mind for your shape as well because if you're gonna add a little liner to this, a little wing tip, maybe don't take it so high here. Take it a little bit more flat and out. I'm gonna take this gray shade just underneath with a little precise pencil brush. And then this is where I get the rounded shape where I'm connecting it. If you have yours a little bit more sharper, take it out a little bit more, but the rounded shape seems to work really nice for me. I would call this a little bit of a soft glam look. If you have a soft glam palette, that's a great neutral and honestly looks pretty equivalent. I'm gonna grab it. This is the soft glam palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. Already I'm noticing something I like more than the Mario palette. So just upon first glance, definitely some similarities, but this one, is a lot more light toned overall. This one has a good grading of deep tones and it's got that nice black right here and then that bone white right here and then some pops of like rosy shades, mauve shades. Honestly, between the two, I would say go with the Soft Glam if I was making a recommendation. Especially if you're more medium skin, the Soft Glam palette's gonna work a lot better for you, medium to dark. If you're fair to light, I think this is gonna be more up your alley. Even though I'm pretty sure he says it's good for all skin tones, comparing those two side by side, you can see the depth more in the palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills, which I'm pretty sure you can still get it along with their Modern Renaissance palette. Those two are a staple in their lineup, if I am not mistaken. Something a little bit more precise, but this also has that wiggle to it and i'm gonna go into this deep shade right here this is the deepest shade in the palette focus it right there same on this side so just about a third of the way on my eye and i'm not going above the crease here and then i'm going to take it below just about a third matching what's on the top and then we're going to go into that brush we used earlier and lightly sweep it over towards the inner part of my eye and then up. Always work this way in, don't sweep out. So sweep in, same here. And that just gives that soft kind of dreamy smokiness but it's not a really intense smokiness. And we want that definition because when we use a bold lip, it's gonna kind of complement it. So I'm just gonna make sure these two match. I do, and then I'm gonna go on top a little bit more. And then I'm gonna go back into that little brush I used earlier, just cleaning off some of the powder. And then I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna do a mixture of these two shades right here and bring it the rest of the way. And that's kind of complementing the blush on her cheek just lightly. We're making some small connections to whatever else is going on in my face. And then using my finger, I'm gonna go into this middle shade, which has been calling my name. Now, this is what I suspected. It would have a transparent base so that it, it would kind of just take on whatever color you laid underneath. And since I kept that pretty bare, 
It's really gonna brighten this area and then help with the deepness over here. So it's just giving me that little twinkle that I want for the holidays, but I really like that softness that it added to the look. A very like glam type of eye look that we've got going on. Clean little precise smudging brush. And I'm just gonna pick up this shade right here with it and place this in the inner corner. Just to brighten it up. And if you want a little brightness, you can take it up here just underneath the brow bone, but because this has some bigger suspended glitters, just be careful and mindful of that. Now, if you wanna make this a little bit more intense, go ahead and use a black or brown liner. I'm gonna go ahead and add the Their Real Extreme Precision line. This is not new to me. I also would recommend if you want a black one to use the Maybelline Hyper Easy liner. I really like that one. I'm gonna go ahead and just take that out and do like the tiniest baby wing. I'm gonna keep it very tight to the line, to the lash line right here, and then make it thicker as it gets closer and over that darker part. Really like using a brown liner because it adds a little bit of dimension and definition, but it's not too intense that it steals the show. I apologize, this tutorial is going a little bit longer than I expected, but that's because I'm so chatty. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use my Anastasia Beverly Hills Base One Eye Shadow Primer and Color Corrector. This is just to brighten up that lower lash. But what it also does is make the look a little bit more cleaner. So if you have any messy lines, um, maybe you can do an amazing job blending, it's okay using some kind of like white liner here. It's just gonna brighten up and polish everything up. Okay, for mascara, we're gonna try a new one. This is the very popular Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara in the shade Jet, I assume Jet Black. Um, I've been holding on to this for some time and I don't really like to have multiple mascaras open, so I haven't used it, but I think this is the time of year we're gonna dive in. I've heard nothing but good things, so let's hope everyone's right. I'm just kind of working that brush in. It's kind of got that hooked little scoopy wand. First impressions, I have mixed feelings. What's nice about it is that that scooped end really helps to flick out the ends here, so they make my eye look a little bit larger. It's also good at adding definition to each lash. It's just not giving me the volume that my itty bitty lashes need. So I'm gonna build it up and see if I can get it to work the way I want. So it is building up, but I just feel like there's other mascaras that do it in half the time. The bristles are a lot softer than I expected, but I don't hate it. I just don't know that I love it. I do like that the wand is small because I have tiny lashes and tiny eyes. So I feel like I'm able to get every lash that I want. Maybe it's growing on me. All right, we are very near the end of this tutorial. So thank you so much for hanging out with me and being patient. The last step is that bold lip. So I have a few options for you. Again, these are part of my Uji, Uji. These are part of my bougie splurges that I bought for my new job and to kind of like congratulate myself. <laughs> if I'm being honest. So I bought the Valentino, Rosso Valentino Matte Lip in 215A. Read my mind. This is what it looks like. It feels luxurious and this is a refill one. So you can pop this out and then put in a refill so you don't have to buy the whole package. Now I accidentally smushed the end of this. So, so sad that I did that. So I'm gonna try and have that part not crumble on me. But I think this could look very nice, very intense. I also bought this one for my best friend because I thought we should have matching red lips. And then the other one I have is from Dior. This is the Rouge Dior 760 Favorite Velvet Lip. Between the two, this one actually feels more luxurious, more sturdy. Um, this outer red part feels a little cheap on the Valentino lipstick if I'm comparing and it's only because I have two high-end ones right here I also just like the black chicness of this Dior one and then this one again has the 
pop out refill abilities because I wanted to buy different shades but like swap them out but not have to buy the bullets. So this one looks a little bit lighter. I'm gonna have to put them side by side. It also has like this, looks like a velvet finish. It is so, so stunning. I, I just can't tell you how gorgeous it looks. I really don't wanna ruin it. This one looks a little bit more orange. Oh man, this one looks a little bit more pink, like fuchsia -y. Mm, left, right, left, right. Uh, mm, I don't know. Catch a tiger by the toe. Eighteen colors, but I'm no Imani. No, wrong with Dior. When in doubt, that's how I decide things. All my major life decisions have been made using Eeny Meeny Money Mo. So before I use it, because it's a super intense red, we're gonna line using a red liner. That's a must when using something very bold, in my opinion. I'm gonna use the Maybelline Color Sensational Shaping Lip Liner in the shade 145, very, oh, almost dropped it, very cherry. Now, for a matte lipstick, it might help if you have a little bit of um, a creamier base just to help it glide on. So again, I'm doing everything in the wrong order, but I'm gonna add a little bit of this Emile Cordon Canelli lip balm. I'm absolutely in love with this scent and the way this feels and works. It is by far the most magical lip balm I have ever experienced. Now I think we're good. Lips are definitely hydrated. I'm gonna go in with the lip liner. I'm also gonna fill in the lip with this. This is just gonna have something for the lipstick to adhere to, to help it not bleed and stain the lines. Even though this is a matte cream lipstick, it's not liquid. I really, my biggest fear is that my red lip's gonna go elsewhere and outside of my lips and then ruin the look. So I'm being cautious and trying to protect that from happening by putting the lip liner everywhere. Already, I feel like this look is coming together and I'm so happy it's turning out. It's my first Dior lipstick, so I feel like this is a moment we're experiencing together. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I believe we have a finished look. Now, if you wanted to take this a little bit extra, you could add false lashes. One more thing before we wrap this look up, you wanna make sure you set everything in place. So. I'm going to use the All Nighter from Urban Decay. I also really like the Professional Super Setter. This is a great one and the Mister is so, so fine. Actually, maybe we'll use this one today because I usually use the Urban Decay one. I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, so nice. Such a soft Mister, but I'm choking on it. <clears throat> This is really gonna help to lock everything in. If you want that extra, extra lock, take a sponge and just lightly press it in. And that's it, we've got everything in place. For those Christmas gatherings, you bet I'm gonna have this combination in my purse with me so I can touch up on the go, along with a little bit of a setting powder a pressed one so I can just kind of blot on the go. But this is it guys, this is the finished look. This is my classic holiday Christmas look that I will definitely be wearing. I really had so much fun trying out all these products. Everything worked well for me. I'm really happy with what I picked up in my haul. I'm very happy with this look. I think, I think it really suits me. So I hope you get the chance to try it out. Let me know what looks you create, what products you're using. I'd love to, to hear about it for sure. Leave a comment down below and let me know how you're celebrating Christmas this year. If you love these types of videos then please subscribe, give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help me out so, so much. Thank you for listening to me and hanging out with me as always. I hope you have a great day wherever you are and happy holidays to you and your family. Love you all so, so much. Bye.